A few days ago, I decided to build a rocket that can fly high and land safely. To make this a reality, I need to build a flight computer. I spent several days browsing hundreds of websites across the internet in search of affordable, high-quality components for my rocket flight computer. One by one, I carefully researched each part, compared options, and tracked down the best deals before finally placing my orders. And today, I received all the parts I ordered. Let's begin unboxing with the smallest box I have. This was the first box I received, and it may contain all the important parts like the microcontroller and sensors. The first thing I found is a paper that includes all the information about this shipment. There are five components in this box, and I'll share the cost and purpose of each part. This is the BMP-280, a barometric pressure and altitude sensor module. It's responsible for measuring altitude by sensing atmospheric pressure. As you can see, it's very small. That tiny part on the module is the actual sensor, and everything else on the PCB is there to make it easier to connect to a microcontroller. As for the cost, I got it for 33 rupees, which is approximately 39 cents. This is the Mini 360 step-down buck converter power module. I purchased it because I plan to use a 7.4 volt lithium polymer battery for my flight computer. However, the Pico microcontroller operates at 3.3 volts. This step-down converter can take the 7.4 volts from the LiPo and reduce it to 3.3 volts. If I don't use it, directly connecting the LiPo to the Pico would fry the microcontroller. As for the cost, I got it for 35 rupees, which is approximately 41 cents. This is an SD card module. My plan isn't just to launch a rocket. I also want to gather data from the flight. This data will help me improve my rocket and run computer simulations, so I can truly feel like a scientist. You can also see the size difference between the BMP280 sensor and the SD card module. I got the SD card module for 40 rupees, which is approximately $0.47. Next on the list is the IRF520 MOSFET driver module. This MOSFET is responsible for igniting the powder charge to deploy the parachute, ensuring a safe landing. However, after receiving the module and doing some research, I found out that it might not work properly with 3.3 volt logic. I plan to run a series of tests to check whether this MOSFET can be reliably used with a 3.3 volt microcontroller. If it doesn't work, I'll purchase a different MOSFET that's compatible. As for the cost, I got it for 41 rupees, which is approximately $0.48. This is the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. It is a small, powerful, and affordable board developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's ideal for electronics projects like flight computers, robotics, sensors, automation, and more. The Pico operates at 133 megahertz, has 264 kilobytes of RAM, two megabytes of onboard flash memory, and uses 3.3 volts logic. As you can see, it's very small compared to other components. I got it for 366 rupees, which is approximately $4.28. It's time to open the box number two. This is the biggest box I have, and it contains all the parts for connection, like wires and connectors. The first thing I found were these header pins. A header pin is a type of electrical connector commonly used in electronics, especially with circuit boards like Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, and custom PCBs. I just had to solder these pins to the microcontroller and to the BMP280 because the other components already had those pins pre-soldered. I got them in 16 rupees, or 0.19 dollars. 
These are female to female jumper wires. I can easily connect and test all the components with these wires before permanently soldering them together. I got these wires for 32 rupees or 37 cents. This is the backup altitude sensor. I purchased it in case I accidentally dropped the main sensor, which I already did, and it stops working. Then I can use the backup sensor. These are two female connectors that will be used for an LED or a buzzer. The price is 23 cents. This is a TP40561 Ampere Lithium Ion Battery Charger Module with a mini USB port. Its purpose is to recharge the battery for the flight computer. I got it for 12 rupees or 14 cents. I had also bought a breadboard for testing purpose, and its cost is 63 cents. This is the third box, and it contains a small LiPo battery. This is a 3.7 volt, 1000 milliamp hour lithium polymer LiPo battery. It's the most expensive item among all the components, and there's a reason for choosing this costly LiPo. If I were to go with a lithium ion battery, which isn't as expensive as a LiPo, it wouldn't provide enough current to heat the nichrome wire and ignite the powder charge. On the other hand, a LiPo battery can discharge very quickly, making it a perfect choice for a project like this that involves high current components, such as nichrome wire. Also, the manufacturing process of a lithium polymer battery is more expensive than that of a lithium ion battery. This battery has a high C rating, which means it can discharge at a very fast rate. I got this battery for 407 rupees, which is about $4.76. This is everything I've got so far for my flight computer project. However, the way I chose to build it is not the usual approach. Most builders design their own custom PCBs and then mount all the components onto them. This method is much safer because a PCB is compact, reliable, and tailored to specific requirements. The reason I didn't go with a custom PCB is simply that I don't know how to design one yet, and it's a bit outside my current budget. But in future projects, I definitely plan to design and use custom PCB. If you're still watching, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading a lot more rocket and flight-related content soon.